Box come. Oh, good job. Lay down. Good girl. Today I'm going to give you my top five tips for new moms. Being a new mom myself, I had to learn a lot. Of, I had to learn a lot, just trial and error. I read everything you could possibly think of, and I thought I was totally prepared. But once Harlow got here, it kind of shook me a little bit. <laughs> Honestly, most of what I read did not have anything to do with my real life. And just a disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I am not a lactation consultant, I am just a mom of a 15 month old baby girl and this is my personal experiences and things that really worked for me that I want to pass on to you. First tip is don't sweat the small stuff. Take all the advice with a grain of salt. Your baby may apply to <laughs> that advice that you're being given or he or she may not and you just kind of have to roll with it. Since Harlow was a little different, a lot of the advice that I got did no, not apply to me. <laughs> so I found myself really stressed out when I didn't mean to be overwhelmed and very scared. As soon as the day comes where you are in labor, you are in that hospital bed and you freak. And you're thinking, are you really ready? Do you have everything you need? And the truth is, as long as you have a car seat, you have a way to feed your child, you have clothes for your child, then you are all set. Everything else can come later. You don't need all the toys, you don't need all of the special bedding or special crib. You will make it work. So again, don't sweat it. Don't think too hard about whether you're going to breastfeed or bottle feed unless you have your mind set already. Um, I, blah, blah, blah. Uh, how you are going to sleep with your child, are you going to co-sleep, do you want your child in bed all on their own, these are all going to just come to you and you're going to figure out what works best for you, what works best for your family and a lot of it, the child will probably just make the decision for you. So don't sweat it. When you calm down and just wing it. It'll work out a lot better. Number two is you're not a bad mom. As soon as we find out that we are going to be a mom, as soon as we figure out that we're going to be a mom, we are very whelmed already. And before you can even process that you are growing a little bean inside of you, people come out of the woodwork to tell you how you should do it, give you their two cents, and really don't give a gosh, golly darn. Being a mom is hard. Whether you come from a real well-off family or you're struggling to make ends meet, you're not a bad mom. You're going to do what you need to do in order to keep your child safe, keep your child healthy, and that's it. So people are going to come out of the woodwork as soon as you find out that you're pregnant and you're going to be criticized, you're going to be judged, and you also have plenty of people that will completely support you throughout the way, but don't let the small group of people that are going to be very negative be so loud. And by human nature, that's very, very easy. And those negative people are the ones that shine the brightest for whatever gosh darn reason, and they just sit in the back of our minds, and we just, we hold on to it, and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that we don't need to put pressure. So there's no one size fits all to parenting. Some things work for some moms, some things work for others, and along with why I'm making this video, a lot of what I read and what I saw from other moms didn't work for me. So don't ever think that you are a bad mom. Your child is fed, your child is clothed, has a roof over their head, you're doing great. Also, don't, so who cares? 
cares if you are formula feeding or breastfeeding your child. It, whether by choice or force of nature, if it's working for you, so be it. Your child is fed, and that's the most important thing. I personally breastfed my child up until now. She is 15 months old and she's still breastfeeding. So it is what it is. I have friends that have only formula fed their child and their children are great. They're perfectly healthy. They're on par with where they need to be. And it is what it is. There's no judgment, no shaming whatsoever. We all know the baby is fed and that's important. But that one really gets me. I hate seeing people online getting bashed for giving their child formula. Number three is ask for help if you need it and take a break. You're going to need breaks. You're going to need help. So just deal with it. <laughs> Suck it up. Ask for help. And this is my biggest problem because I want to be super mom. I want to try to do it all. I want to cook, clean, hold the baby, feed the baby, give the baby a bath all at the same time and it's just it's not possible so sometimes I need my stepson or my husband my mother-in-law somebody to watch the baby while I do all of these other things heck to even shower for myself I have been known to go multiple days without showering because I just I can't get the five minutes to jump in the shower and wash my hair really quick so I try really hard to ask for help or just tell my husband that I'm to take a shower rather than trying to soothe the baby or play with the baby. Mama needs to be clean. One of my favorite stories, growing up my mom always told me about this one in particular time where I would just not stop crying at all and she couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I was fed, I was had a clean diaper, wasn't too hot, wasn't, I wasn't too cold, I just would not stop crying. And my mom got so overwhelmed and she started crying and she just didn't know what to do. So she put me in my crib, just let me cry for a little bit and she took a breather, stepped into the bathroom and just cried herself because she didn't know what to do. And Growing up, I kind of felt like it was harsh, like, why, why couldn't my mom soothe me? <sighs> my camera overheated, so I had to take a little break. Let's see, where was I? Sorry about my mom. Growing up, I just, I didn't understand. Why couldn't my mom soothe me? Why did she just leave a baby laying there crying? And then I was put in the situation myself. And looking back on it now, I think Harlow was just overtired and being a new mom, I just, I just didn't understand that yet. So there was a day Harlow was just crying nonstop. And I changed her diaper, I fed her, I did all of the things that needed to be done and she would not stop crying. So I laid her in her crib and I shut myself in the bathroom for three to five minutes and I bawled my eyes out. Mm. So overwhelmed, I felt so hard on myself, so guilty that my baby was crying, there was nothing I could do. And so once I regathered myself, I took her out of her crib and we laid together. Mama, mama, mama. <laughs> we laid together in the bed and we both fell asleep and took a nap. And it's, it's just funny how easy it is to get overwhelmed and overworked. Just edit it out. Thanks, Gunner. Just keep in mind, it's going to happen. The babies are going to cry. You're going to get overwhelmed. And it's just, sometimes you need a breather. So put your baby in a safe place. Take the three minutes. Calm yourself down and reapproach the situation. And you will feel much better. Remember that postpartum depression is a very real thing, so if you find yourself feeling upset and sad and just blue and dark all of the time and have negative feelings towards yourself or towards your baby, then find help. And there's plenty of resources out there for you. I will link some down below. And 
keep in mind that there is no shame in it. If you need to put, put on medication or you just need to talk to somebody, then do those things because the most important thing is that you have the right set of mind for yourself and for your baby so that you can both grow happy and healthy and have a great relationship in the future. Would you like to come say hi? Because you keep... Hello everyone! That's Gunner. He's new here. No, I'm not. <laughs> over the dress and we all hear the horror stories <laughs> and it's truly terrifying when I was pregnant I read all of these articles and such and blah, blah. all these dangerous things that these kids were getting from God knows where and I definitely thought I was going to be that very over overprotective germophobic parent and once she got here I quickly realized that everything is dirty and I feel that after you get the go-ahead from your pediatrician after the first four weeks or so of your baby's life that you should take the baby out into the world. You don't have to take them to very crowded places or anything like that, but just stepping outside with them and letting them stop. Stepping outside with them and letting them see the clouds and see the trees and feel the wind on their face. It really will help and I started thinking once I got the okay from my pediatrician I started thinking about my memories as a kid and growing up and I ate food off the ground I played in the dirt I did all of those things and I think I'm okay I don't have any health issues and I want the same for my child and the more I started thinking about it too in order to build that immune system your body needs to interact with these germs and learn how to fight them off. So I want Harlow to have a strong immune system. I myself feel like I have a pretty good immune system. I don't take a bunch of vitamins or anything like that to help boost it and I get sick once a year maybe. Um, on a few occasions uh, the kids, my neighbor kids or something like that might bring something over and even when I do get sick it rarely is really really bad so I want the same for Harlow and her being 15 months old she's had a cold twice the first one was really scary she was three months old we had flown to Texas and back to visit my dad and I think that's probably where she caught something. Eh, no real telling. I kept her in a carrier pretty much the whole time and I didn't really let her interact with <laughs> any of the shelves or anything like that at the airports. But it is what it is. Kids are going to get sick. It happens. So her first cold was. She's pouting because she wants out of her high chair. Her first cold was pretty scary. There's, at that age, there's not really anything you can do to help them feel better. Besides um, having a humidifier, uh, we sat in the bathroom for a while with the hot water going in the shower just to get some of that steam. But she survived. She's still here. There's, she doesn't have any health issues or anything like that. And since then, she went until about her uh, one year party. And then shortly after that, she got sick again. And I think again, she other kids and stuff like that. And her immune system's still trying to build itself up. But the second time around, wasn't nearly as bad. So as she gets older, the more cold she'll get, her body will learn how to fight that off faster. And it's just something I don't obsess about anymore. Finally, number five is don't forget to love yourself. Your body has been through a tremendous ordeal. Whether you gave, whether you gave birth by C-section or vaginally, your body has been through a lot. 
to one of those ladies that springs back into pre-baby body shortly after leaving the hospital or it could be like me and still struggle to lose those last 10 pounds or so but would you trade it honestly I wouldn't so I have to remind myself of that I could have never been pregnant and have my old body back or I could have my daughter that I absolutely adore and wouldn't trade for the world so I will continue fighting and So I will continue trying to lose these last few pounds, uh, being in a very junk foodie household is very, very difficult, but I'm trying and I see a steady decrease, decrease in my weight and the way my body looks, it's starting to slowly tone back up and if it takes me another year or so, then it takes me another year or so. Hopefully it doesn't, but I have accepted where I'm at. So if you get a chance to have a glass of wine or have a beer and take a bath, put on a face mask, then do so. Take those few seconds, those few minutes that you can and really enjoy yourself and be appreciative of everything that you have. Appreciate yourself, appreciate that little bundle of joy and living every day, waking up and just soak it all in because they don't stay little forever and you've really got to enjoy it. Was that your fifth mom tip? That was my fifth mom tip. Do you have any tips for being a first time big brother? Nothing? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing you would say to your friends who are going to be a big brother for the first time? <laughs> Alright. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to keep up with this craziness. And we will see you next time. Bye! Say bye-bye! Bye! -bye. bye. <laughs>